All right, so like few words in the intro, but uh, let's jump into what's the topic of uh, today's discussion. So um, in today's like slash tutorial workshop, uh, we're going to show you and uh, kind of pronounce the very important aspects of uh, what is uh, nowadays called large language model evaluation or like generative AI model evaluation is that when you start working your projects and your goal is to say, oh, okay, there is a many, many, there's a big set of open source models that are available to me uh, and uh, where can I start from? Like, should I get like Mistral, Llama? Should I get any type of the model that exists elsewhere to put in my like actual application that solves my actual business needs? And that's not always straightforward answer because most people start with uh, like what so-called benchmarks and see, okay, if this, mo this model is claimed to be the best in the benchmarks, then perhaps it will work for my specific needs, but my specific use case. But as you may su suspect, that's, that's not always true, and uh, the benchmark numbers can be misleading. So to give you some sense of uh, what, uh, what does it mean evaluating models right, you can uh, think about uh, that if you put some your LMs in a real world use case, for example, um, you will try to, to apply some legal use case, which is very important to be very trustworthy, of course. You can find that some of the research suggests that uh, one out of six of the uh, benchmarking queries contains hallucinations, which is definitely not something you expect if you put your model in a production system to serve for like legal applications, for example. So essentially, it's, you can find many, many uh, justification that the existing AI, existing holistic AI benchmarks can tell you as little as just like generic uh, model quality check, maybe proxy to understand what's like completely out of the scenario that you expect versus something that you may consider in your real application. So a couple of the benchmarks that exist uh, and people typically use are Hugging Face leaderboard, where you can um, scroll down and you see different models, uh, comparing them across different data set benchmarks like Heliswag, MMLU, which you all uh, already perhaps heard. So these are benchmarks to understand the quality of LMs by means of how the, how the LMs can answer some factual questions how much hallucinations uh, contains in general, again, like against the general uh, common sense reasoning. But it's all about the benchmarks that give you the perception that the model can produce the generated text in the right way. But again, it doesn't tell you how much of the legal use case it can solve, for example. Another type of the approach to evaluate LMs are uh, so-called like chatbot arena, coined term by LMC's chatbot arena. So here the idea is that instead of running the model against um, static benchmarks where you have data set, you have predefined answer, and you understand how LMs predict the right answer or ground truth answer, you instead present the model answers to third party labelers or different party judges or that's how we call them annotators and you ask them okay what's how do you grade this model answer do you grade it okay or not okay or for example if i give you two distinct answers from two different model versions from two different lms which one you choose which one you pick as the best model and based on this uh, um, trials so called uh, people infer uh, lo score is like similar to like when people play chess and someone wins and then uh, all wins uh, and loses uh, count to the is this uh, holistic lo score so they they produce this lo dashboards where it can com where they compare different models against each other but again it doesn't it gives you very good proxy very good understanding how a model can chat with you how a model can produce the answers that you may prefer as a user 
but it doesn't give you the sense of how model can actually behave on your target use case. Say, for example, you're uh, working on finance data, you're working on the legal use case, or you're working on specific functionality that you want to introduce in your application. But what does it mean, like the functionality in your application? So essentially, it means that you expect the model not to produce some free-form generated text, which is like uh, when you interact with them as a chatbot, but you expect them to produce some structured output, for example, like JSON, um, uh, JSON data. And essentially, that's, that's uh, what uh, people are currently um, meaning when they refer to agentic workflow. So like, as soon as your LM is able to produce this structured output, which like in simple form, in simple use cases, but definitely not all use cases. In simple use cases, they might be like just a classification based on the text input, or like you may use this structured JSON output to call some external APIs and, for example, ask for some external services to produce more data, getting the some SQL queries in third-party database, or running analytics based on your structured output. So this is all about like. The, what do you expect from the model to give you as the output? So the structured JSON by means of the values to be constrained to this particular subset of the items, for example, labels, or some, um, some for example, specific data format, like you expect them to extract the date time, some numbers, values, or so on and so forth. So that's, that's exactly what you would call as building your LMS application. So this, you, you may think about, oh, okay, I can get my LMS and then uh, create the application. So you always end up with uh, understanding that this application layer should be uh, built. Uh, you should focus first on this application layer. That's where your attention should be um, in the first place. And then the question is, okay, how can I validate? How can I validate that my LM produce the structured output that fit exactly my needs, that fit exactly my labels, or uh, that produce the format that I expect in my downstream application? So when you ask yourself about like uh, picking the right LMs, and there are like, right now, I don't know, I, I, I never counted it, but I, I suspect there are hundreds, if not thousands, of open source LMs currently available. Those are like, uh, created by, uh, by um, teams like Mistral, um, Llama, or fine-tuned based on this. But it, it's, it's all about, okay, if I see the leaderboard, if I see this uh, um, vast set of the LMs, how should I choose what's worked for my use case or not? Like, one of the things is you may consider, you always consider, is uh, like the running cost. And like, you know, the model size can be um, from billions to do dozens of billions, and depending on uh, what's the model size, it will actually translate to how much you'll pay for your servers to maintain these models, and uh, how much it generally costs for you to, to, uh, to serve this model in a real production. And also, uh, you may consider other service level, level objectives like uh, latencies, um, uh, like you expect the model answer quite quick. You don't expect them to um, to slow down and to give the churn for your user eventually. You expect sometimes you expect them to produce as much data as possible in one time. So that's what we call the throughput, which is very essential in analytical applications. So you want to process as much data through your LAM to understand like what are the like the sentiment of your um, support against the system in, in overall. So you don't expect it to produce to uh, process each item one by one, but uh, you, you would rather um, transform the batch of the data through a LAM, and that's where the throughput is essential for you. But um, although this aspect is very important, and there are many topics, there are many best practices how to consider the costs versus uh, latency versus uh, other uh, model size trade-offs, we will not focus today on uh, What's, uh, what is the cost and what are the latency aspects of the model. Where we will focus is to how to evaluate the quality, how to understand that uh, the business use case is actually solved by my model. Because if you think about this, that's essentially what you're trying to accomplish by the end of the day. You're trying to understand 
whether the solution that you present to yourself, to your stakeholders, is the right solution. And how do you make, how do you make this presentable? If uh, you can present, like you can infer, you can collect the data sets, you can run your model against these data sets and get some numbers, but in, these numbers will not be completely trustworthy because you still, uh, okay, what, what's like 89% uh, means for me? Is it okay, is it not okay? So you end up still to look at exactly at the data to have this direct supervision into what's, um, what your data produce and understand like whether it is it's fine quality, is it okay to move it further in your production system or is it not okay? So it's inevitable step and it always be uh, what's so called like the vibes check of the model to understand whether the model is actually working on your actual use case or not but not relying completely on the benchmarks, numbers, and everything that uh, exists uh, and pre-created before you're running this. So, yeah, I just essentially emphasize again that um, evaluating the quality with human supervision is, uh, is one of the most important steps uh, before you're considering that uh, the work is done. And again, like the um, many, if you start, okay, you now agree that um, that's something that you may introduce in your workflow and you start thinking, okay, I need to look at uh, the output. But how you typically do this? So typically you end up, okay, I need to get my predictions from the model, I need to put in some spreadsheets or in some like Pandas data frame uh, or any other format. Then look at the, each example one by one, understanding the quality, uh, then uh, maybe correct something, then plug it in back in my pipeline to refine or fine-tune the model. So it's a kind of multi-step workflow, which is sometimes uh, give you some, oh, no, I, maybe I postponed this project, maybe I just trust my benchmark numbers. That's definitely uh, makes sense uh, from your developer, developer experience and developer journey, uh, but that's not the right, the right way to go. So. Uh, what I'm gonna give you today, if I, I, I want to give you like the very simplistic, very straightforward and human-centric workflow, how you can simultaneously benchmark your model in the chatbot arena style. So you are you are the main judge of your model. You uh, basically judge how the model behaves, and at the same time you create the benchmarks that tailor it exactly to your need. That's not just the benchmarks that uh, can serve as a proxy, but exactly the benchmarks that. Uh, is designed specifically to solve your uh, particular application. And uh, when we're talking about how we design this, so there are many ways how we can assess the quality. As there is like three different approaches people are actually pursuing uh, in the industry. Like you can understand how the model behaves in the uh, symbol grading, like for example, just assessing whether it's the correct or not correct in a five, uh, um, uh, five grade scale, like assigning one to five stars, and essentially it gives you the idea how much of the model house you need in overall. Like you can compare, as I said, like in chatbot arena style, making them side by side, which is very common uh, also in RLHF reinforcement learning with human feedback workflow, where essentially you model the preference based on the human judges. Or sometimes you can uh, think about ranking system uh, and uh, the idea of how I can apply evaluation in my ranking system. So that's uh, like the different methodology that you can follow as your evaluation workflow that gives you the perception how your model. Um, how quality your model is in your final production system. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I will jump into the demo, but before just outline uh, the steps that we will gonna make today. Uh, that will be a very hands-on. Uh, I hope that will uh, not blur your eyes, some console and coding, um, but if it will be so too boring, so just let me know. I maybe uh, put more visuals, but uh, you can, um, Go inside this directory. Uh, this you can download the repo. It can play it by yourself. There is some uh, demo instance which I definitely show, but uh, feel free to use it as a playground. Playground. So essentially, what we're going to do today, like first we define, as I said, like design the interface uh, for this human-centric evaluation, and this is a very essential step because uh, that's where you need to get the actual of your business goal, like the idea of what are you trying to achieve. And that's not 
like the end of the day. Uh, that's uh, okay. That's maybe simpler uh, to say because uh, you may say, "Oh, maybe I'm just I don't need this specific interface because I need to assess my my outputs." I can just put my output in the spreadsheet and see how outputs uh, are uh, performed against the input. That's fair, but uh, if you think about the use case with the, J uh, with the structured output prediction, it's, it's quite hard to inspect all the structured output in the spreadsheets. And if you think more broadly, for example, if your goal, and that's kind of be the problem space that we're going to solve today. If your goal, if you're working in finance and, for example, you want to process invoice data, you don't want to look at the invoice transcription based on OSR because it's, it's kind of meaningless text that doesn't give you the sense uh, of uh, whether the predictions are correct or not correct. Uh, and you may miss the error, which is like uh, vital in uh, your downstream application. But you better present the full picture, and uh, like working with uh, images, for example, is not as straightforward as uh, is not as straightforward um, uh, as like text uh, when we're talking about spreadsheets. But again, like defining interface is important. Uh, capture the predictions for LM. Then the next thing is like okay, how we can connect. Uh, models to this interface. So essentially, I'm proposing you not to create the data and then put this data and then run this LM, but simultaneously connecting the LMs in the interface, assessing them in one step. So just like looking at the data, making some actions, and getting back the results. And then finally, this results uh, is essentially what constitutes our simulation. So as you see, this by the end of the day, if we connect all the things together, we'll have this like full system where the only thing is left for you is just look at the interface, understand uh, what are pitfalls, correct them, and see the results. All right, so um, yeah, feel free to stop me if you have any questions so far, and I would love to keep this as a free talk and uh, to make it more clear. Um, but if not, uh, I can jump into the demo. So, um, okay, so this is just a simple example of the repo where uh, we will have the Libel Studio instance, and you can see like there's a explore demo instance. So this is a, a speci specific. I will not close this link. This is a specific uh, demo instance uh, that is prepared to workshop, and so by clicking the link, you can be inside and you can play uh, as well there. So this is this is the instance where we create and we design our evaluation interface. So let's start first uh, with creating the project. So the project uh, will encompass the data that we put in there, and uh, that's where we connect our LMs, and that's where we do all the stuff. And by the end of the day, we'll create the um, um, the final results. So creating the projects, uh, we can um, call AI dev eval. So we created the name, so that's it. So we end up with creating the project. Now uh, the project consists of two main things. So first is the interface and the data that we put inside this interface. Uh, let's first start with the simple data. So just to give you a sense how it works, I will First, put the data that consists of the different texts. So each text, let me see that where I have everything is connected. So each, te each text is uh, some simple excerpt. It doesn't really matter what's the sense of this text. Uh, I just want to give you like very short demo about uh, what uh, is possible to do. Then we can jump into how we can extend this towards like more um, complex uh, use case complex scenario. So as you see uh, now, we imported uh, about like nine, some like about thousands, thousands of the examples. So each example is going to be annotated or related by its subject matter expert. So if I click here, I see that uh, uh, it's almost ready. So I have my text data, I have my text input. Uh, now what I need to define is. Uh, the interface, so essentially how I can look at my data, like through the lenses of subject matter expert who need to process it. So in Label Studio, you can find uh, many different templates for different use cases. So you can see there is a computer vision, 
There is a natural language processing, uh, audio speech processing, conversational AI, time series analysis, videos, uh, generative AI. So there are many, as I said, like there is a versatile tool. So no matter what type of the data source you introduce into the project, you can seamlessly connect to whatever you want to have on your screen. So here we imported textual data, and we're essentially working with the natural language processing. There is a inside each section we have predefined uh, templates for different use cases, uh, and like uh, as soon as we work, for example, with a very simple text classification scenario where, like, say we want to evaluate uh, the responses or the text based on the sentiment, so we essentially assign one of the um, uh, one of the label to the um, to the text. If you are not um, uh, if you not agree that so they should be like free labels or you want to add more, you can just delete them and it will update the interface on the fly. So you can extend it to your need, you can put more styles, and that I will show you later on how you can extend this to more interesting scenario. But let's focus right now on this one. So we configure it, as you see, like there is a preview that uh, gives you the idea how your interface will look like for your subject matter expert. Uh, and then that's essentially it. That's uh, what everything we need to do. And now we can just start and go and annotate each example by by one. We click on submit, and we proceed with the um, annotation as as they go. So essentially, that's uh, what what I just shown you is so called like manual approach of doing the uh, annotation work. But that, that's not the main focus, although like it's very important. And you can may consider this as a preliminary step for you to create, pre-create your ground truth data set, your benchmark data set, and create your like leaderboard and run your LAM across the leaderboard. And of course, that's a viable approach. But again, it's a little bit cumbersome because every time you need to change something in your model output, and I know like the business use case are changing so quick, so the first day you solve one task, then your boss comes and say, oh, no, actually, we, need, we decided to switch and gears and like, start working on a completely different thing. And then you end up to recollect all the data sets and then restart again. And so it's just like extend your time, and by the end of the day, you will end up with not solving your use case, but just constantly managing your workloads and workflows by collecting the data, putting it in your pipeline, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to do today is uh, something is which more interesting, which makes your user experience more seamless. So instead of collecting and then running your LMs, we plug the running LMs into Label Studio project so it can process the things on the fly. So for that specific purpose, there exists uh, the tool like this is extension uh, of Label Studio ecosystem, the tool uh, or like the plugin, which is called Label Studio ML. Uh, so essentially, it gives you ability to run the server that can work with um, Label Studio, can be integrated to Label Studio, and can transfer the inference predictions, like the LM predictions, to the Label Studio in the right formats uh, as Label Studio expect. So. For the sake of this presentation, uh, we'll use, so this is like very beautiful project uh, in open source, which is called SGLunk. If you never use it, I would definitely recommend to use it. So essentially, it's a very easy uh, to use way of creating inference server. So just like typically one line specifying the uh, hugging face model, and you have your server spin it up and ready to use uh, for, um, to, be, to connect to your application. And uh, the beauty of this is uh, not only the, the, the very quick way, which is uh, not the only uh, one in the space, the very quick way of creating the LM server, but also with nice things like uh, very efficient throughputs, uh, the structured output, which is very essential for uh, how we connect things together, how we ensure that model produce, for example, uh, single choice classification instead of just free form um, hallucinated text. So it comes with many different tools, but uh, by, the end, by the end of the day, it creates the server. So the server spin it up, uh, you have your like uh, local host machine, or if you deploy this in the third party server, you have the um, URL that you grab. And here we predefine like eight different models. So there, as you, as you might see, these are like the I can enlarge the screen just 
So we're going to test, like, uh, we, we have eight different models. Some of them general purpose models, like Gemma, Metalama, Mistral, Quen2, Stable Lamb. So, like, it's recently, uh, all of them, like, uh, we, we picked not the greatest in terms of the size, like 7B models. Uh, they typically not performing um, as well as larger models, but uh, that's exactly the goal of presentation. We, want, we don't want to introduce additional costs in our production system. We want to see whether they are okay to be used, like whether the small models are okay to be used for our application if our application is not just like producing the uh, chatbot text, but our application is a little bit more narrowed and uh, uh, resides in agentic workflow. So again, like we have um, four generalist models uh, and uh, three models like more specialized uh, for uh, code generation scenario like code Gemma, code Llama, and DeepSeq. And what we're going to do today is uh, connect all these models to Libo Studio making sure that uh, they can process the data on the fly as uh, we annotate, as we label them, and uh, giving the answers of the model, then try to represent in a meaningful way uh, the like, comparison analysis across different models. Um, you actually, like, if you download this server, if you will try it on your own, you can change uh, this a bit. You can change the line. As you see, like, there is a LN's uh, JSON file uh, living in, this, in the same repo, so you can change it, and you can, um, you can change it to your models if you want, for example, to test it out and to see how this tool works for your uh, use case. All right, so how are we going to do this? Um, that's where things become more low level, uh, and so we essentially get our uh, plugin, get our model, and start this server uh, that connects all these uh, all these guys to Libo Studio. So in order to do this, we go into the console. So just to make sure you see what I'm doing, and so we start our models. So we essentially. All right, so now we have the server. So you see like there is a local host server running and uh, the models uh, that are used in our application are connected to this server. So essentially now we, we have fully integrated service and I'm gonna show you how the integration works in this use case, but uh, now you see like there is a server. The one thing that we need to uh, bear in mind is that while working uh, with the server in um, um, in distributed way, you may end up like not uh, having the local host accessible uh, out there, but you want to produce your URLs that uh, can uh, be accessed by third-party machines. So we have the instance running somewhere else, and now we have third-party servers. So I, I use the ng rock right now, but you can you're free to you to just deploy in. in uh, whatever cloud provider you have and get the publicly available links, but just for simplicity, I use this um, public links produced by NGROC. And uh, if we click on the link, so if we see, and we just have some check, so we see like the our model is running. So this essentially tells us, like the health check tells us that the model are correct. So we, what we're gonna do next, we get this link, and we go back to Label Studio instance, and Label Studio instance gives you the way to connect the model running in the formats uh, that's uh, available by this Label Studio ML tool. And we connect the model. So we essentially tell like LMs. And we put this backend URL so that's the model, uh, so they, that now they can communicate uh, with each other, like Label Studio and the model backend. And let's check. Okay, now you see that the model is connected. And what essentially it means, it means that uh, every time we access the task, we might end up to see not the blank output, but instead we see the results produced by, uh, by like pre-annotated results by the model. So if we can go back to, uh, to the console, we see that there is some predictions running, hopefully, hopefully not. 
Oh, yeah, okay. Now, it, now it's good. So as you see, like I haven't clicked here, so we can submit, we can uh, wait another one. And uh, the model now starts annotating on my behalf. So I, I, don't, I don't make anything. I just see how, like, uh, how the model can annotate things. And I don't know specifically what type of the model right now is working. And that's, it, that doesn't really matter. So if we go back to the main screen, um, I can open like any, any of the tasks, like for example, uh, the task that I haven't annotated yet, and I can see that uh, all my models are producing the results. So we can click and we can see, we can compare their answers across, uh, um, the, the answers against the data that is taken uh, as the input. But again, like you can compare this one by one, but that's not the, the way to go. Like it's very hard to get the sense of uh, how well this model perform uh, on your data if you just like uh, need to, to have this uh, visual inspection. Although you can like inspect in a more meaningful interface, but that's not the, not not the way how you might want to inspect your model. So essentially, you want to get your data, and as soon as you already produce some. Uh, ground truth data by means like your annotation, you can compare the models uh, against your annotation and say, okay, if model match my annotation, if model match my ground truth data, then uh, that's the correct thing. And th that's, that's what I want you to, that's what our kind of final step of this workflow is to present the final evolution results in the most meaningful way. In order to do in this, uh, so we have the, um, like the, another server that gives you just like very, very shallow server that run on top of the uh, Label Studio SDK. So these are the functions that allows you to connect to the Label Studio to get the data, to format this data, to run some different functions, uh, to compare the metrics, and uh, then display this uh, in, a dashboard, um, in a dashboard that gives you the perception of how the model can be compared against each other. So. If we, if we go down, so th these are like display evaluation metrics section. So we install the requirements, so it's just like the very plain uh, fast API server. And then uh, we can run the server to see uh, how the model scores with each other. So let's um, get the server up and running. And now another. This server is running on like uh, four, three, two, one ports, and uh, this port uh, has another publicly available URL, which we can uh, open. Let me just. So now it's like just empty. There is nothing, but we expect the, the chart. So we get this URL, and uh, we put the. Uh, we connect this model through the webhook. So every time, we, what, what, what we want to achieve, like every time we make some annotation action, we submit the annotation, we evaluate our models, we connect to this uh, third party server with the webhook, and uh, it uh, consumes this annotation, and then it uh, displays the final results uh, of the evaluations on the screen. So let's uh, try to make this. Um... All right, so let's go and check, for example, this data. All right. I just have some dummy uh, examples. I don't think too much about like what's the essence of the text, what's the... Um, semantics, but uh, anyway, uh, so we, we update this annotation, we can make like more and uh, just go one by one, update them, and, uh, and see how we then how it can be appeared on the interface, so. Da -da -dum. Something went off. Oh, all right. So yeah, one thing I forgot to include is to make sure that uh, 
Um, we have the Label Studio base URL, Label Studio API key is available uh, in this setup. So let's uh, just export a variable and make sure that uh, we, we know where uh, our instance is working on. So when you work with the Label Studio SDK, uh, you need to have this API key. And uh, API key is something that you can retrieve on in Label Studio instance. So essentially, you get this API key and create it to uh, call this Label Studio API key variable. All right. So let's hope that now it's going to work. Let's go back and try to, to make more actions. All right, we update this. Okay, so not sure how what's what might be wrong with uh, this, but let's let's first put aside this dashboard server. Let's try to uh, find how it can be retrieved first. In um, so we have the Libo Studio project, uh, Libo Studio. Projects uh, have some specific numbers. So, for example, this is a 13 project. And let's uh, get uh, some, some statistics that are available in this project. So, we collect the stats. And uh, once they collect it, you can see them displayed in a single, uh, single payload, single blob, so they compare against each other. So, but again, like this, this is something that's uh, better to be represented in that way because in case when you have multiple um, different like structured outputs, uh, you need to evaluate each individual outputs uh, against uh, the um, against the each uh, each model. So, what we're going to do now is. Let's go and create the new project that uh, uh, is richer than uh, the project that we created before. As I said, like we're gonna play with uh, AI, like uh, AI Dev Workshop with invoice detection when we're working with uh, uh, finance analysis. Like, in, for example, there is invoices. So in invoice analysis, uh, we want to annotate more complicated structure and. Uh, this structure may consist of like the invoice itself that we're going to present to the people, as well as uh, the different uh, scenarios, like different uh, data that you can extract from this invoice. So when we now see what type of the data we want to collect, that can be, for example, uh, different labels that uh, you can extract from the invoice. Uh, for example, if you want to annotate the invoice category, you have uh, you may end up with working with invoice dates uh, or like with a store name uh, that invoice is based on. There is like total amount of the uh, invoice produced is. And as you see, like uh, in every component, we include the prompt to direct the model how we can extract these things. So let's uh, put this in action. Uh, we also have like the full structure with output JSON. Um, file that gives you the this interface that you can create in Label Studio. So let's do this. So as you see, like uh, you will have the picture, you have your structured output, and you essentially create. And again, like uh, in order to make this more live, so that you can annotate uh, your structured output and you can create uh, and you can relate your model on the fly. You connect the same server, and uh, as again, like I, I don't change my server. I just use the model as they are, and uh, they will be aligned with the, my outputs. So essentially, you can create whatever the output you want to, whatever your business use case and the goal you want to solve. You create them, 
you connect the model, and then you start solving your task. So let's go and uh, let's try to look how, um, how the model reacts on, on our application. So for, um, like, as you see, why interface is important. So here, you may, if, if you just transcribe it and put uh, into, the, um, into the UI, and you may end up thinking, uh, seeing, OK, I don't understand like, what is going on. But here, you can provide like very easy to use way to inspect what, what is there and uh, how to work with the data, how to understand different aspects, and see actually how the model performs. Like what's, what they extract as the total amount, like uh, whether it's the specific categories that, for example, it should be transportation and travel, uh, what's the invoice date, so everything is tracked on the fly by every model that we plug there. So now every time we click on, uh, on annotating, then we get uh, the, the things uh, running here. So let's maybe try to get our server back, but if not, I will just give you the perception of how statistics can be calculated. So essentially, you can, you can uh, like if you see that something is off, something is not working, you can correct, and that, for example, the total amount is definitely not something that you expect to have here. You correct the things, and as you correct them, you create the comparison between different statistics that you can then collect from the uh, from third-party models. So let, let's, let's make the last one, just to collect the data. I don't know what's, perhaps there is some uh, specific dates, that's, but it's also about like transportation and travel. Um, let's submit it here. Let's go maybe grabbing something else. So there is various ways. So if you, for example, if you decide, okay, and I need like more categories, I need uh, something else, then uh, uh, you can create your interface and connect the same, uh, in the same flow, you connect the model and see how the model behaves. All right, so uh, then, yeah, one, one thing actually we forget is to then uh, make sure that's, the server that is co collects analytics is also included in our uh, webhook. So let's go back and try to, to make that happen. So we see we have some invoices, the webhooks, and we add the webhook just to ensure that it's the right one. So we made an hook so that the label studio now can communicate back to this server. Then if we, so something like, for example, here is definitely very, um, very difficult to, for the model to understand like what's the, based on OCR transcription, what is contained there. So it's likely that it produces a lot of errors. And we need to correct them on the fly and see then how these errors uh, can uh, be elaborated down the road. All right. So, uh, if we go back to the server, we see that uh, like our uh, our model now communicating to they sent uh, to this third party statistics dashboards the data, and we can see like the comparison study across different categories. So we created the categories for each structured value, like for example, inv invoice category, invoice date. Uh, like store name, as you may see, like they all now represented on the screen, and as you can also get, like this is a very naive example of uh, how we process the data, but you can understand, for example, that for some particular categories, like for the dates, the code-specific, code-specialized models can behave uh, reasonably well, quite well, although like for the for the models that are aimed to extract the semantics, something like mixed troloquent to maybe better. So this is a this is a like very simplistic dashboard, but it just gives you the perception that uh, you can connect and you can continue annotating your data. Like you can say that okay, I then go ahead and I can change. Um, this is 
actually not even the example. I can change something else. Uh, this is like Chinese scripts available here. And uh, your, your data will be appearing on the dashboards as you annotate it. So this whole system represents you like once it's connected, once you get like the webhook, the server up and running, connect things together, your ultimate flow is to go see the data, check what's wrong, correct, and inspect the results. And by the end of the day, this is your dashboard, your personal benchmark dashboard, where you can inspect how different model behaves, uh, behaves against, uh, on your business goals and give you the sense, uh, should I select this model for my production system? Or should I like pick another one? Or should I combine them uh, based on my different goals and my different structured output values? So this this is a this is setup that gives you the um, not only the easy way to evaluate the model before you put the production, but also the way how you can reevaluate something that is working already uh, in your production system, and then consider whether you need to fine tune. And again, like since you already collect the data, you already have the benchmarks, you have the result evaluation results, and you have the training data that you can use to fine tune the model. Sure. Maybe, maybe you can take the mic so that people can. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Um, test, test. Not working. It's, up, it's not working. Uh, which of the external ones do you support, like stable diffusion or open vision? Do I compare the benchmark against the big ones? So, yeah, if we. Go down to the, um, uh, go back to the to the like how server is configured, and to the idea that the interface is able to be applied to computer vision use cases as well. You might understand that uh, the way what you can use whatever the model. If you're working with the computer vision like image generation models, they also can be represented. Uh, as soon as you have this connection, as you use, as you use this uh, uh, Label Studio ML tool. So it's, it gives you just, just the, the interface to plug whatever, any type of the model. So we don't give you the model. So these are just like open source model servers uh, uh, on our side, but they are um, for demonstrated purposes. But we essentially don't give you the model. As soon as you deploy your model, you can connect it to Label Studio, so that gives you the predictions on the fly. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, pretty much it for the workshop. Um, again, just to summarize uh, where, where, what's, where we end up. So we presented you the, um, the idea that uh, you can design the interface for evaluation. Um, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think it's working. Uh, that, that's that's a good question. So from the um, from the perspective of displaying the results, that's the straightforward. You, you essentially you can replace the like single choice generations or like the daytime pickers or whatever with the text area where you can present the code. But uh, from the perspective of how you evaluate the code, that's can be tricky because like that's the. Um, I don't think like there exists like the unique metric that you sense that if you correct the code, this your code it like can be compared to the ground to the predicted code with a lens, which, which is quite open question I think, but an interesting one, yeah. Oh, it's working. Okay, so uh, let's say you have this uh, uh, list of um, LLMs, and then uh, some of them gives you wrong answers. Is it possible to use this uh, uh, input data to fine tune it? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's 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 what the main idea. So, in the same workflow, you get the evolution results, the benchmarks, data sets, and the data sets that can be used, or the data set can be used to fine tune your models. Uh, at the end of the day, because you correct them, you see like now you produce your ground truth data, you you can get this ground truth, and you can use for fine tuning. 
Will Lab uh, Studio be able to do this step for us? Uh, yeah, yeah, and it, it, it is able. So that's the one feature I haven't shown to you, but uh, essentially, uh, because it's out of the scope of the talk, but uh, if you go back to the model, you have this configuration that uh, also allows you to start the training process right, uh, right after each annotation, like, or write some actions taken on Label Studio. So, but it's again, like if <laughs> there is some connectivity um, uh, task you need to solve first, so for example, you have your training pipeline with some API, you have Label Studio, you should connect things together. As soon as they connect it, then uh, it can be automated so that every time you, cr you create some, like say, hundreds, thousands of the data points with the refined labels, refined outputs, you can put it in back in the training pipeline and uh, it can uh, automate your fine tuning. Okay, thanks. Uh, quick question. Um, so for the demo you are that you're showing us, like, so is it? Uh, am I correct? Understand that you use the, one of the models to annotate it, all the examples, and then as you go along, you as a human, you just check it, and then your results are based on your checks comparing across all the different models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, you're you're acting as like the most ground truth. Uh, um, the most uh, trustworthy benchmarks, uh, because uh, you you better understand like what you're trying to solve. And as soon as you are a subject matter expert, you can see what's going on with your models. You can correct, and then this data is used as a final kind of benchmarkings and vibes check of the model. Cool. You may say. One more question. Uh, is Label Studio uh, open or uh, yeah, yeah, well, something? I maybe I forgot to say. Yeah, it's absolutely open. It's Label Studio is open source product, so you can download. And uh, again, like if you follow it by the link uh, before, I put this, uh, like the Label Studio, there is uh, like documentation available. It's open source data labeling platform. And uh, yeah, essentially you can install it and you can use it and you can reproduce everything. Um, so. It's possible to run it locally, not to on... It's possible to run locally. So yeah, it's possible to use this instance just if you want to playground, or it's, it's, you can just go install your local laptop and make all this flow that I just displayed in your local machine. Okay, except for like run 7B models, <laughs> which may you... In that case, we don't need the proxy through to make the public API thing. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. you, you, can, you can do local host. I, I, I shown that just for the sake of like, if you have distributed system, and typically that's how you, you work. Like you have training pipeline here, like prediction here, and, uh, and your dashboard here, and label studio, and then you connect things. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> thanks for the nice presentation. Um, one question. Um, to which hosting methods is the studio limited? Um, you showed one way to host the models, uh, to access them. Um, are there possibilities like Olama or other possibilities? Sorry, I, I don't. Uh, possibility to what? Uh, possibilities to host the model, um, to access the model. You 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 probably um, talk to the model via API or something like that. Uh, yeah. What options I have to host the models to talk to? Uh, Label Studio. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, so. In he here, you can use whatever server you might want to. Uh, we use SGLang server that uh, allows you to host the model as it is and the host the weights. Then, uh, um, in the repo here, you can find the code, like the server essentially that connects this. LM inference server to the label studio. And the commands, like the one line command that you can execute to, to make things up and running, like for the Drucker or for the local machine. So the hosting is, the server that hosts LMs is like the, it's not in the label studio, so it's, it's yeah. outside. Yes. It can use like VLM, SGLang, or any type of other server. You, you can even connect, there is example that you can connect OpenAI servers or any other. Um, available uh, third-party uh, LM providers, but but I need to write implement uh, the binding to or what I need to do if I host hosted with Olama, for instance, 
Sure, it... but but we we implemented for you most of the things, so okay. you only need to think about like what's uh, most of the types, like most of the interfaces uh, we covered, and you can just seamlessly connect them by running. This is not too much of a deal. But yeah, if you have something very uh, dedicated to your how you serve the model, like probably you need to just follow the guides uh, that's available on our documentation. That's um, how how to deploy, uh, how to make your machine learning integration. All right, thank you. But you can find like many different tools. Yeah, um, thank you for your presentation. I just had a question about the other type of evaluation you mentioned in the beginning, which is um, cost, uh, throughput, uh, model size, and all of that. Do you know any good resource online to compare different models regarding um, these uh, I metrics? Came, I mean, definitely, I, I can, if you could just uh, write me a message, I can send you something that I researched for, but. Uh, I, I, I came across many of such resources where people compare, like make the cost, uh, quality, latency trade-offs, and definitely I can send you over something uh, that I have, but it's not the, <laughs> the something that we studied uh, in this, and like it's something not something that we provide you uh, for evaluation within the Lego Studio. That's why I'm not focusing right now. Okay, sure. But yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, write me the message and find me, and I can send you over whatever I have. All right, cool. Thank you. So I was thinking about um, LLM fine tuning, and uh, when sometimes we want to actually do stuff uh, for uh, actually manipulate the context. Sometimes when we uh, we want to synthesize, uh, well, make a summary of the latest response, or make it, or do some uh, heuristics of on the latest response from the model uh, for the fine tuning operation. I was thinking if maybe we can actually use. Level Studio to do that. Do we have that kind of flexibility in order to maybe connect it to our hook that's actually going to do the process behind? Do, do the what post? The process behind. The, the process of uh, manipulating the context. Oh, OK. So you mean like the when uh, we can use that as a guardrail to, if, if that's, that's what you're talking about, like the safety when we have like prompt injection. Yeah. Yeah, I see. OK. Um, yeah, of course. Um, and again, like it's uh, no, not more than um, what we call the like human supervision because you can talk, you can say this as a moderation when uh, you can moder you can just look at the data and see, oh, okay, whether it, there is some like attack, like prompt ejection attack happens. There is there like the safe response, non-safe response. And again, like it's it follows the same flow where humans should be involved in the loop. They should understand what type of the data it is and correct it if possible. And then we can refine these guardrails uh, in a downstream um, um, workflow where like we we essentially control our production system, uh, production lamps. Uh, but again, that's, that's something that uh, um, we give you the tool where you can interface the human and experts with your data, with your production system data, and then you can use the data produced by Label Studio, by the system, uh, in whatever purpose you have, like either producing structured outputs and fine tuning the model, or doing the assessments over the safety and uh, evaluating prompt injection and other type of the uh, strategies that you apply to, labels, uh, to LMs. Right, I think uh, if no more questions, thank you for attention and hope that uh, now you can be empowered with uh, something that will simplify your day-to-day -day life with the, doing the LM evaluation and beyond. Thanks. <laughs>